Favorite clone to play and for Jordan, favorite clone to act opposite? Um, for me this season, Rachel's been the one who's really exciting to me. Um, we we, we um, really peel her back and, and get to kind of dig into that, that cold ass exterior. Um, <laughs> and, and yeah, and, and open her up as, as a, a vulnerable person. Um, so she's been really, really fun to play. Um, last season, by far, Allison. Oh, yeah. Woo. Because that was so unexpected and so cool and fun. This season, Sarah. Yeah. There was um, because she was the she was the one that offered me an opportunity to stretch Felix in a way that we haven't seen him before. And that's going back to that initial question as to like what are the challenges of coming back and you know facing audience expectation. There's the weird challenge of creating the character, and then there's the even weirder challenge of sustaining the character, and then continually recreating and stretching and stretching and stretching and trying to keep you guys guessing. Um, and that's, Sarah kind of offered me the, the platform to do that. Back to the floor, someone's holding what looks to be a wisp. <laughs> If the clones were in a Hunger Games scenario, who would make it out? Don't you guys want to know how we like put them in a frame and... <laughs> <laughs> Just who wins in a fight question. So this is separate from the clone gun fighting question. Yeah. Yeah. Hunger Games scenario. Hunger Games. We win. We win. <laughs> clones unite. Everybody wins. <laughs> Felix makes their outfits. Yeah. <laughs> the Stanley Tucci. He builds the outfits, right? Stanley He does build the outfits. Yeah. Oh. Oh. No, I'm pretty sure he does it. So. <laughs> Anyone have a non-fight based question? Uh, oh, hello. Hi. Yeah. How are you? Will Felix have a love interest in the second season? That is a, a very good question, and I think it's safe to say that yes, Felix will. <laughs> Did you hear that hesitation? It's because the sniper rifle is literally pointed at my forehead. Right now. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm twelve. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm still scared, apparently. <laughs> He will, there, there will definitely be some love and lust for Felix, um, which all comes from, again, like stretching him, getting to see more of his pride. Oh, Walked right into that one. Oh, please God, don't put that on YouTube. It's already on there, it has 40,000 hits. Eliza's going terrific. Uh, and yeah, I, Yes, it's all part of making him different and seeing another side to him and um, keeping you guys guessing and, and not settling for complacence. Oh, there's a lightsaber. You gotta go with the lightsaber. Well played. Shout out your question. I wasn't even your lightsaber, you borrowed it. Hey, she's just as casino. Hi, casino. Woo -woo. If Sarah did not see Beth kill herself, how would Sarah have met the clones? It'd be like, no show. <laughs> that, that pretty much would... The I don't think it would have been at the community center. <laughs> now, <laughs> it wouldn't have been in Minnesota with Cosima. She had ventured into suburbia to meet Allison somehow. <laughs> <laughs> Helena would have come after her. Sooner or later, Helena would have figured out where she was and come after her, and then it would have been more like a, not a real clone show, just a sister show. <laughs> it would have been fun <laughs> between <laughs> sisters <laughs> trying to kill each other. <laughs> Maybe they meet at Toronto Comic Con! <laughs> Sorry, blatant pandering to the audience today. <laughs> <laughs> Blue more heads.
Uh, oh, in the front. Oh, you have several people pointing at you. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so a question about the drinking process. I was wondering if you were able to see your business. Why is our program not doing more of it? Oh, yeah, get them up there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you are my ultimate inspiration for actors, and just, I know for all of us everywhere, you are just an inspiration, and you changed my whole life, so thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Um, and my question is, what is your favorite relationship to portray between um, two of the clones? That's a great question. Um, <laughs> so beautiful. Um, God. First season, um, you know, uh, uh, playing with Sarah and Helena was really, really fun. You know, the strange dynamic they had where they kind of wanted, you know, they were trying to kill each other and <laughs> were loved each other so much, which is so true of siblings. Um, and then uh, uh, second season, um, I, Rachel and Sarah, and the kind of, uh, opposite class differences between the two of them and the kind of insider thing that Rachel has versus the total outsider thing that Sarah has always had um, and they're kind of in, they, they've just been raised so opposite and yet they're the same you know what I mean and and, uh, and both desperately ruthless and both um, willing to fight so hard for what they want so that that was a really fun dynamic for me thank you thank you in terms of those scenes, I think as geeks we like to pull back the layers and, and learn how something is done. Physically, what are you acting opposite? Um. A ball. A ball, a ball and dot and X. Usually in... Is it a yeah, tennis yeah. ball? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a tennis ball sometimes. Um, <laughs> and sometimes it's not. And sometimes it's... Uh, we, I, I also have an amazing uh, clone double who you might have seen in some of the behind the scenes She's stuff. She's wicked. Yeah, Catherine Alexandri, who is... Um, memorized all the lines but not only that she's she shows up every day fully performing with me giving me everything I need um, at the, for, to play opposite um, taking taking direction from all, all sides being technically on the on the nose and um, and then also being spontaneous and, and throwing things at me that I don't expect so she's she's pretty much I could not do this job without her um, and then other times it's an X of tape on the wall. <laughs> Which is always really exciting to play opposite. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's it's a it's a mix of the two. I prefer the tennis ball. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, do. I find the X very assaulted. <laughs> but sometimes they'll draw like a little like smiley face on it. It gives me. <laughs> then I don't feel lonely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Oh, oh, there's a gentleman I was trying to get to his question earlier, right in the middle, wearing a looks like a sort of teal hoodie. Yep, yeah, you, buddy. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he was asking about advice for actors, other Canadian actors uh, aspiring to be the leads on a space original series. <laughs> I think for me, it's always been about training and about getting out into as many classes as you can, as many different techniques as you can. Whatever interests you, um, it's going to change. You're going to work with a teacher for a while and maybe then you start to feel like, oh, I need something different. I need to mix it up. You know, I've, I've taken... Miser at the same time as, as really specific technical scene study, you know, uh, script analysis and everything. So kind of balancing it with some really impulse-based work at the same time as some really heady kind of technical work. Um, doing improv, um, watching theater. There's so much amazing theater in Toronto and in New York, which is a hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, just getting out there and, and absorbing as much as you can. And then also, um, uh, meeting people who aren't actors <laughs> and you know having a life outside of it too that that fuels you so you have something to give you have stories to tell um, through your acting and you're not just an acting bot <laughs> you can be because you can get obsessed with it sometimes but that's the, I think for me training is is the big thing that's that's the big one I think for, for me it was always like learning to live as trite and wanky as this sounds really learning to live authentically and I struggle all the time. Like I work consciously every day to not 
be a different version of myself. Like it, it's, I'm going to sound like a nutcase right now. Um, just trying to live as honestly as possible. You have to live a life because you are drawing on those experiences. You're drawing on those interactions. To be an actor, you've got to live a life. And not be afraid of fear because it will happen. You will, be, you will definitely experience fear, but don't fear the fear. It's normal. And don't be afraid if you fall out of love with it sometimes. I quit many, many times uh, in my head over and over again when I wasn't working. So to see, like literally I'd get up in the morning and be like, well, that's it, I quit. <laughs> and then by about three o'clock after I'd eaten, um, <laughs> somehow for some reason, low blood sugar and food seems to correlate with my mood. Um, Usually after I, you know, by the end of the day, I'd, I'd be back on the horse again. And um, but, but don't be afraid if you need to take time off and focus on yourself or, or live your life again and meet new people and, and gain new perspective. Nice. Oh. We got time for a couple more. And I just picked the last one, so I'm leaving that to one of you. Okay. Uh, well, there's wait. a sign. There's a, yeah, there's a, a sign. sign. It's a club club sign. Hey, do you have a question or just the sign? Oh, hi. <laughs> Will we see a blooper reel, and if not, can you share a funny story? Uh, can you tell the Rachel one? Do <laughs> you remember where the, uh, you tell the, the blooper reel, um, <clears throat> we've been collecting one, yeah. I believe the editors have been collecting one. Oh, I, I know. Oh, yeah. The Rachel one you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, so I, like, you know, I was in, like, full Rachel mode, like, trying to intimidate somebody and being all sassy. <laughs> I came up from behind my desk, and I was like, Da, 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 whatever I was saying, my mic pack just like came dangling between my legs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> that was the that was the hilarious joke. <laughs> yeah, very undignified moment for Rachel. <laughs> What's the vibe like on set? Like, do you? Because I mean, watching it, there's so many intense scenes. But do you guys actually? Does it break your character if you're able to kind of pull pranks and be pranksters on the show? I don't think well. We were both pranksters. No, I'm not really a prankster. I wish I was fun. Like I know. That. Aren't you? <laughs> I'm not. I do that next yeah, season. Yeah, I'm gonna pull so many pranks. <laughs> um, we, I think this season was a lot for me at least. Last season was like ah, like a scream. It was just yeah. a big scream. So I didn't. Rem I don't remember being very light at any point. But this season, we you know we're, we're it's like we're a family and and things start to to get messy sometimes and yeah we, we have we have a good laugh but mm -hmm. but we, we work so hard and we love our work like i love the work so much i feel so kind of stimulated by it that i'm not like i better pull jordan's pants down now yeah. because i'm bored out of my mind yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's safe for the weekends yeah. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> time for maybe one more question Anybody have like an epic uh, panel wrap-up question? Like that feels like it really epic? No pressure. Maybe it's gonna, oh, there's a cool costume at the back in white. But there's also three hands pointing at the young woman. Let's go, let's do both. Let's get both in real quick. Yeah. So in white first, après vous. Okay, um, I think you guys are a great inspiration. Like I'm hoping to get into Ryerson. Uh, and with that, I was wondering, like, how has being in Orphan Black affected you and your lives? Because, like, you probably got, you guys probably have some weird stalker people like me wanting to know every detail about your life. Like, I know a little too much about Jordan, Jordan and Tatiana than I should. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> well, if you remember the yellow person from Fan Expo, yeah, that was me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Security! <laughs> How has it affected you guys, though? I guess there's, you know, the, this room, I mean, yeah. is a huge testament to Orphan Black, obviously. Um, it, just the visibility thing is a new a new thing for me. Um, you know, people knowing who we are and, and being rabid fans of the show. And I never get recognized. No, me neither, actually. Oh, oh no, it's... Remember it's, at it's, Comic Con in San Diego when you guys, you and Dylan got mobbed and I was like... <laughs> like <laughs> No, that's not what they were thinking. You were just unapproachable because you're so beautiful. Oh my God. Keep going. <laughs> yeah, just the, the the fan art, the, the all the kind of response. That's the thing that's really changed my life is just having that kind of dialogue always happening with fans or on Twitter or whatever. That's sort of opened up this whole other thing that I never expected. 
Well, it certainly opened doors too. Like uh, in, in terms of career and, and different projects, it, it definitely opens doors. It's changed. It changed everything for me because I was completely unknown before the project. Um, so it's it created kind of an industry awareness, which allows you to audition for parts or be considered for parts that you wouldn't normally be considered for. The, the really good ones too. And um, and yeah, the visibility thing is is different. This is totally wicked and really different. Um, what was I saying? Crap. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> well, I think as well, before we get to that last question, uh, you know, we, we got to know you before season one aired. We interviewed you a lot, spent some time with you. And so now, even after all of the success, I, I, on behalf of all your fans, I want to say thank you for remaining kind and rad because you have not changed one iota. And I mean that in the best way possible. I don't think I don't think anybody no matter if you're Canadian or what really wants to watch navel gazing so you know the themes that that you tackle are what make what you're creating international um, and then you know and then it's about it's about finding your your friends and your crew and the people that you know that can, can pull off your vision and then falling on your face and getting back up and trying it again. Um, you know, we are, you know, we really appreciate our American partners with BBC America, but we are a Canadian made show and we're really proud of it. storytelling start start telling those stories small and uh, and shoot big that's the secret there is no secret no. It's, it's just do it good <laughs> Jordan and Tap before we wrap up anything you want to say to the to the fans in Toronto Comic Con we love you guys thank you And please don't stop the Tumblr art and the gifts and the memes, because we see it. We really do see all that stuff. We see when you send us stuff on Twitter, we see the stuff on Tumblr. It's wicked. It's amazing. Our walls and you are guys are like incredible artists. And I, I have all of it everywhere. <laughs> in my home. It's called narcissism. <laughs> Alright, we've got a giveaway for an autograph.